you think you rank among the NBA's best players right now? I feel like I'm the best player. I just know none of them can mess with me. <laughs> You know, I, James is a, he's such a fantastic player. And, you know, all I could do is sit on the sidelines and just shake my head. You know, like some of those plays he was making, the shots that he was making. Um, you know, those are difficult shots for, you know, 90% of the players in the league. And uh, he makes it look, uh, look effortless. Who's the most unstoppable player in the league right now? The guy's averaging 39 and a half points in the streets, that's 40. That's James Harden. I mean, he's a lefty. You want a mid-range pull-up, you want a floater, you want a layup, you want a dunk, you want a free throw. He's legendary for his little step back. You can say that it's a travel, you can say it's not a travel. Ref doesn't call it, so I'm all for it. Find a way to stop it, travel or not. Right. All records are a sense of pride for the work that you put into the game. So, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to have it because I think it, it, it showcased what I, actually how much practice and, and effort that I put into it. I think what you're seeing with James Harden is the same. You know, he's, he's not doing this off the whim. It's something that he's worked and, and he, he's perfected to a point where the results are starting to show. He's good enough, and he's definitely, you know, one of the most unguardable players that this game has ever seen. Um, but, you know, a lot of mistakes are putting their hand in that cookie jar. You know, it's something that we've talked about, something that, you know, we knew we, we couldn't do, and we did it a lot, you know, so... Um, that's the that's the mental focus part of, of this season, you know, that, you know, we've we've struggled with. There are only three humans on Earth who have had these crazy scoring streaks of 30 points or more over and over and over again. You had it 14 games in a row. You had it 16 games in a row. And James Harden, of course, crazy streak this season. What do you think of what he's doing right now? Well, I think he, I'm not a fan of in terms of winning championships. I don't think that style is ever going to win championships. But at the same time, you have to keep your team's head above water to win games. So you have to do what you have to do to win games. And he's doing that, right? Now, I think... Um, so are you saying you don't think James Harden and the Rockets, as constructed, can win a title? Not with this style of play, it won't win, right? With one player dominating the ball. Now when you have Chris Ball come back and you have more, more movement, to the offense where you move guys around where you're harder to find and Chris now that's back, something but you that's, mean more in the, yeah because listen yeah. if you take one player you put him at the top of the key or you put him on the wing and you're running screen rolls you're always in front of the defense mm -hmm. the defense can key on that mm -hmm. particularly in the playoffs it's and that's easy, easy to guard. defend yeah it's easy to defend now what he's doing is absolutely remarkable though and i think um it's a, it's a testament to how remarkable it is because uh, people are now trying to minimize what it is that he's doing I mean, he's doing some phenomenal stuff. You know that James Harden is also evolving the game right now. Is that mm. level of criticism that he's getting, is that warranted for how he's playing? No way. No way. I mean, he, he, that man has so much talent. And he's so great. And uh, he deserves all the praise that he gets. You know what I mean? There's always going to be a critic out of there. It's always going to be out there, somebody out there saying you can do something else better than what you're doing. But, you know what I mean, I think he just keep his foot to the pedal and um, and keep his foot to the floor, I meant, and keep rocking, man, and doing his thing. Because I know his teammates love having him um, <laughs> in their foxhole and rocking with him night in and night out. So, James, keep doing your thing, man. Uh, what excites you the most about playing against him in particular? Well, just the skill level. Uh, obviously, he has a lot of respect of uh, everybody in our league, so we understand how talented he is and how well they play when he plays well. So. For us, just, it's just about playing great team defense, making sure we're staying disciplined um, on both ends of the floor, but making sure that we play our type of game and make them adjust to us. So it's the physicality of the game. He sat him down, as my kids would say. He sat him down. So that was, that was, a, that was a nice move. Uh, I'm just glad I'm not that guy that they fail. Uh, well, that was very disrespectful. Uh, but uh, that was a great move. And, uh, you mentioned that you, you thought James should have been the MVP last year. Do you even think there's a conversation, a debate this year? No. No, he earned it. You know, the things he's been doing, you know, um, all year is incredible. You know, um, I think he's locked for it. You know, he deserves it. So, you know. Um, One of the people you got advice from when you were trying to turn things around was, ironically, James Harden. Yeah. <laughs> what advice did he give you then? You can use against him now. <laughs> um, you know, there's just it's funny. You know, you you ask all these guys. You know, what do you see here? Like last year it was PG. You know, right. and this year it's James and, and CP and all those guys. But 
you know, for me, he, he really just told me, like, you know, just stick with it. You know, it's not all going to just be gravy. You know what I mean, it's not all going to be great. You know, there was times when he was in OKC where, you know, he didn't, things weren't, you know, going great. You know, mm -hmm. he was playing well, but things weren't like yeah. what he, what they are now, you know, and I think it gets, it's a little bit of adjustment period. And that's really, you know, we obviously we worked out with each other over this yeah. past summer and he was saying the same thing. Like, it's not always going to be what you think, what you think it is until you get to a point where you can slow the game down yourself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's completely different. And, you know, you take that advice and you, you try to apply it and you, you start to get impatient and you're kind of like when and when and then when it happens you're that's when you kind of sit back and you're like oh like i see what you're saying now even though you know part of it was was the free throws but he has a 50 point triple double um when, when a guy has a performance like that how hard is it to overcome that as an opponent no you can't put him on line we put him on the line 20 times he's already talented offensively could put the ball in the hole multiple ways drive set back threes um but you're giving them easy, easy points. We put a guy like that on the line. You know, you can't put KD on the line for 20 free throws. You know, you can't, you can't put him on the line for 20 free throws. You can't put any of our, uh, you know, scores that we have in our league on the line 20 times because they just see the ball. Uh, I mean, James is one of the best ISO, one of the best pick and roll um, threats, um, one of the best off the bounce shooters. Um, you know, you just got to keep a body on James. Um, he get hot. He can get hot and get hot fast, so uh, you just don't let him get easy ones and, and, and you know start to torch. Because uh, then you, you know it's, it's not much you can do. Whether he's throwing a lob or he's coming off those pick and rolls to finish, or he's you know stepping back for his three, uh, you just can't allow him to get hot. Was that you throwing a 13 on your jersey after you got called that job? <laughs> I've seen that once or twice. I tried it myself, and obviously they got confused. Thought it was. You know, they knew it was somebody different, so they called it. But uh, it is what it is. You don't often get called travel zone. I guess that was it. Well, not on that move, because I thought that was uh, that was okay. It's copyrighted. Yeah. <laughs> Were you trying to add that? James Harden and the Houston Rockets. These gentlemen are on the path to this championship glory that you were able to attain. Yeah, sure. I, I think the, the the focus is there, and uh, it's amazing. You know, if you look at uh, Harden, you know, last year, he put up amazing numbers. Didn't make the All-NBA first team. Didn't make the All-NBA second team or third team, right? And so you look at their summer, and they just went in the trenches and said, you know what, we're going to lock down. We're going to focus 100% on what our craft is. And uh, they went into their muse cage. They started dark musing, and they come back extremely focused, and here they are. Especially if I'm guarding them, uh, it's going to be, I'll take my all to try to, you know, make it difficult for them out there. But, uh, I mean, it's a great score. How about right now, though, if, if you're not voting for yourself or anybody on your team and you had to vote for somebody else, just as a basketball fan? Uh, I'd probably say James. You know, uh, they had to get rid of, of one guy. And, you know, he was that guy. You know, he is a max player. Uh, went to Houston, just got the max. But he reminds me of the unselfish little brother. He came in. He didn't complain that he came off the bench. He right. relished in his role. He learned from the two guys. He kind of stole Ginobili's style and took it to another level. He's a great player. But now that he's in Houston, he's ready to become a star. You know, they asked him yesterday, are you ready to be the man? And he said yes, and I think he is. At the top of the key in that pick and roll, he's very ginobili -esque. He's very tough to beat. So if he plays like that, Houston should do well. Uh, he's, he's unbelievable. He's a, he's a great player, uh, very young. Of course, I'm in a different uh, part of my career. Uh, I'm playing my last few years, and he's just starting. I mean, what did you? What did he want? A free throw, a three-pointer, a layup. He got whatever he wanted in that in that game, and I got to be better at, at taking that away from him. Um, well, uh, I think when we played them in the Eastern or the Western Conference Finals uh, a couple years ago, I think that lit a fire in the James. You know, he was very upset at how that season ended, and he came back the next season, and the year after that, and he's gotten better every single year. You know, so I think because of him alone, you know, they have a chance. You know, obviously James is a guy who can get you 40, 50 points, you know, pretty easy. Uh, then you have uh, Westbrook, uh, who's dynamic, going to the basket and finishing around the paint, getting rebounds and getting assists. So, you know, those two guys are, you know, very tough to stop. Funny story, I pissed, uh, I pissed James Harden off. So what happened? I'm in, uh, I'm in Philadelphia. We're filming Untouchable. Okay. Um, and I had a day off, so I decided to go to the Sixers game. James Harden is playing in the game. And the whole game, the whole first quarter, he's just, he's off. And I was like, you know why you off? 
because you're in my city. Your beard stinks. I hate you. I was like, I hate your calves. I told him, I said, I think you got, I think you got butt shots. I was saying a bunch of stuff to him. And he got mad. He said, he said, remember all of this. He said, I'm about to cook you. I said, you gonna cook me? Well, put me in the pot because I'm ready to be cooked. <laughs> We're talking like he's. I don't even know why he's paying me this much attention. Like, I, at, at some point, I was like, James, this is very unprofessional on your behalf. Like, you're, you're not even supposed to be talking to me this much. <laughs> James went on to score 55 points, and here's the bad part they beat us by 30. And with like a minute left, he was dribbling the ball, staying in the half court, and he was just staring at me. And he goes, he goes, tell your team what you did to him. And I said, <laughs> <laughs> I, said, I said, you keep your mouth shut. That's our business. <laughs> what have you learned about guarding him through the playoffs last year? I mean, you always face him many times. Yeah, he can't reach. You gotta stay disciplined and straight up. Definitely don't reach on him and uh, just uh, you gotta get, you gotta lock him in possession. You can't relax. You can, you can, Nice Harden is taking B minus players and making a B plus yes. players. Yes. This is what Westbrook doesn't do. Russ, going up against going up against James in a playoff series, you guys are friends. I know you won't be like chumming it off off the court, but is that kind of is that a cool thing for you that you guys are going up against each other in a big time series? Um, it's definitely cool. It's just a, it's a great experience. Uh, you know, something that you can talk about later on down the line. Um, it's definitely uh, it's good. You can guard Westbrook for a game or Harden. You got to pick one. It don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> it's going to be a long night no matter what? It's a challenge either way, just like uh, I would hope they say the same about me. How old would you have been when you first played against him, James? I don't know. Probably 12. <laughs> I don't know. Long, long time ago. What's it been like to watch? I mean, you've grown, and what's it been like to watch somebody grow? And, you know, so close by. Plus, change other than the beard. Uh, yeah. I know when he didn't have a lick of hair on his face. So. <laughs> man, a lot of this has came about. Man, you know, we 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 grown. You know, we 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 talk about it a lot to where, you know, we didn't ever think we'd be in a position we are today. You know, and to be able to have that type of conversation with a guy um, that you grew up with, um, that you went through every stage with, you know, it's definitely, definitely crazy to see. My basic approach, just try to not make anything easy for him. Um, just try to guard him and uh, don't foul him. And it's basically, yeah, just try to do the best I can. But, things, uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Are there things you can do to keep him off the line, or does that almost fall into the uh, official stance? No, not really. I mean, he does it. Um, he's a great, he's a great player. He knows how to use his body very well. Yeah, uh, you know, you just gotta be disciplined. Uh, he, he keeps you on your toes, uh, and you know, you gotta be all 48 minutes of discipline. Uh, no silly fouls, no reach-ins, and you know, just playing disciplined defense. You know, uh, not just me. We all gotta do it.